back here on the Cover 3 Podcast. I'm Chip Patterson, and we're very excited to welcome a very special guest for this episode. You may know him as a 2019 NFL draft pick of the Cincinnati Bengals, where he continues to be a contributor to their running back room. Maybe as the Texas A&M school record holder for the most rushing yards and most all-purpose yards in a single season. And in the spring of 2023 at Texas A&M School of Law, students will know him as Professor Williams here for the first time on the Cover 3 Podcast. We'd like to welcome Travion Williams. Travion, uh, you are joining us here in, in the midst of training camp. How are you doing? I am fantastic. I'm breathing. I'm doing what I love to do. Um, looking forward to a new opportunity or something I might love even more. Um, like I said, I'm just blessed to be here. and Thank you guys so much for having me. So the... The opportunity here, it was a it was a very funny circumstance and it was a very modern circumstance of the you know social media and Twitter playing a role. Uh, why don't you help our viewers and our listeners understand how this opportunity to become a teacher, uh, where you went to school at the School of Law, how did it all come about? Wow. So um, so if we're gonna go back to the roots of how all this kind of went down, it all kind of came about as a joke. So originally, um the dean of the law school, he um, created a post on Twitter and he was talking about, oh, the law school is rushing up in rankings and it, it must be because Travion Williams is at the helm. So I so I seen it on my Twitter and uh, obviously it was a picture of me and, you know, with the law school, all the different type of stuff. So I was like, is there someone else by the name of Travion Williams that played at Texas a that is going to be a professor in the spring? So I was like, so I commented on it and was like, am I missing something with a question mark? And it kind of blew up, went viral a little bit. So um, obviously, um, one of the professors, her name is Alex Sinatra, she reached out to me and was like, oh, you know, what would you think about it? What, what would be your thought about actually doing this? And I was like, you know, heck yeah, let's let's, let's try it. The next thing you know, we were on a, a Zoom call with the dean of the law school, with the Chandler of Texas and now with, the, you know, everybody kind of getting everything going and getting the ball rolling and everything. So like I said, it's a new opportunity. I'm excited about it. Absolutely came out of nowhere, but um, an opportunity like this you can't pass up. So took the took the opportunity and ran with it. And in those conversations with Alex and with the dean, how long did it take before you zeroed in on name, image, and likeness and NIL and the opportunity that there would be to educate you know, these uh, future uh, participants, you know, mm -hmm. in the representation game? You, know, you are going to be talking to people who are going to be interested in sports business there in the law school. How long did it take for you to realize that was going to be a place where you could uh, be an invaluable resource? Oh, absolutely. I felt like that was something I can be a part of and definitely something I can contribute to off the bat. Just when the opportunity and the notion of when they first started explaining everything of how the course could possibly go and what we could possibly do with it. I was like, obviously, I wasn't able to capitalize off name, image and right. like when I was at the collegiate level. But however, when you get to the NFL level, what's different about it? There's no as there's no difference. Obviously, it's just the collegiate level at the NFL level. So obviously, when you come and bring those things, you know, bring those two things about, I feel like I can definitely school, um, you know, school the student athletes, also school the, school the advocates. So the advocates are the one who will be properly representing the student athletes. So I feel like if I can bridge that gray area for them and, and really um, really show them what everything is about and, and put them in position to capitalize off of that, I feel like, you know, we can revolutionize NIL and absolutely make a difference in the world. What do you think are some of the things that advocates need to know? Or like, what, what are some of the top things that come to mind when you think about the opportunity to speak to people who might be moving into that advocacy role when it comes to working with athletes within the framework of NIL? Um, I just feel like it's, it's, it's best to properly understand, like, okay, what is a actual student athlete? What does a student athlete actually have to go through from the student side of it? You know, obviously, what are the schedule like? What are the things that they have to deal with off of the field? You know, the things that can obviously hinder them if they can't take care of the first thing, student, you know, the student portion of it. And then when it comes to being an athlete, obviously, you know, being an athlete and being an athlete, that's the number one thing that, that the player has to handle for themselves. But I definitely feel like when we can properly show and understand and, and put these advocates in positions to understand what a student athlete is about, what they compose, the, the things that they need to be successful and how that can capitalize for them in the name, image, and likeness business. I feel like, you know, when they when the advocates understand that and understand that at the optimal level, they can be in position to properly put the student athletes in position to obviously capitalize off, you know, their name, image, and likeness. Do you have any thoughts on uh, but for example, a lot of coaches right now are talking about wanting to see a standardization of NIL. Uh, you know, there's there's a push right now in Congress for 
uh, you know, different bills. There, there have been some, they've failed. None of them have gotten to the point of being passed as law. But do you have any thoughts on the framework of how it should work or is the way that it is right now uh, just the way that it should be in terms of um, the way that different states have laws and, and different athletes have different opportunities? If you were able to be the NIL uh, czar, if you were able to be the commissioner of NIL for the entire country, do you have anything that you would change or, or do you think the system is good as it is? And I feel like, and it's crazy because when you think about this, obviously this question right here is the sole reason of why, why haven't student athletes been, have been paid up to this point now. And the reason of that is because how do we properly put in a retrospect of what is, what can we do and what can't we do? Obviously right. the only reason with the NCAA, obviously we haven't been able to be in position for student athletes to capitalize is because there's no way to really kind of gauge it. Okay. So obviously, you know, the NCAA came out and said the thing about, okay, about boosters making the NIL deals, you know, you know, all the different types of stuff like that. But at the end of the day, I feel like if we could properly create um, and put in and put in retrospect that student athletes are workers, they should be compensated for their work and put it in a structural standpoint of they should be compensated for their hours that they're doing. And we can put that into retrospect and do that. Then we can have a baseline compensation for these guys, just like the NFL PA has a representation for through to the NFL and we create their baseline for the players, why shouldn't we have a PA for the co you know college players? Obviously, I know that there's, there's things in the work now, but we should have a PA for the players who can properly go to the NCAA and say, hey, this is what we need. This is what the players need in, in the essence. And then we can take that to the colleges and they can be, everybody can be compensated at the same level. And then obviously when it comes to marketing, you know, anybody who have the extra NIL deals, you know, that's just for them and, you know, go from there. But I feel like if we have something mandated, where everybody can obviously eat from it, then it'll make everything easier. Right. I mean, there's a an idea that NIL isn't enough. You know, no. NIL is not even coming from uh, the schools who are getting to profit from the media rights checks that are coming from the game, which is being played by the players. You know, NIL is still all third party. You know, it, it's it's money that's not coming out of the big pie. It's coming out from the side. I mean, it's, it's and it, NIL probably not enough then, don't you think? Oh, 100%. And then I feel like it's a standpoint of like, okay, NIL is, is something where it's like NIL is its own deal. I feel like NIL doesn't intertwine with NCAA. The NCAA isn't coming out of pocket to funnel, to compensate these athletes. So it's like an escape goal for the NCAA. If we're being, if, you know, honestly, if we're being honest, you know, so I, I definitely look at it like, okay, obviously the NCAA gave them the green light for this, but what is the NCAA actually doing about it? Obviously, they allowed them to do it, but what is the NCAA putting in place from the NCAA to the student athletes? That's that's the big question mark that I feel like you know that should be um that should be filled for sure. Have you talked to play? Are you are you in contact with any players? You know, either at Texas A and M or anywhere in college football, friends or have any idea of um, stories or things that you've heard that have informed some of your opinions on on NIL and sort of the way things are working in the modern era. Yeah, hundred percent. I, you know, I've been in communication with you know with some college athletes, some guys that that's honestly dealing with the stuff now. Just honestly hearing about the new type of deals and the certain stuff that they go through, and it's crazy because I'm excited about this um, class because I can properly educate these student athletes that every deal isn't a good deal, and you have to understand that these companies want to use you as a focal point for their company. So at the end of the day, you have the final grounds of what you want to set in place. You don't need to water down your brand and to accept every single brand because down the line, that'll hurt you. Down the line, that won't put you in the best positions to properly capitalize your name, image, and likeness so you can be compensated in every type of way. And then also, you know, you got to be a great athlete. You got to be a great individual before you can even be in position to do that. You can't be a guy that, you know, that's that's not doing the proper things, you know, uh, you know, Jack Ryan guy, guy that's getting in trouble and then expect to get these deals. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, name, image, and likeness is your like, are you likable? You know, how's your image? And then, you know, when people say your name, what comes to mind? So obviously when you break that down, then you can kind of get a retrospect of, um, you know, what can be done at that level. Trevion, you're, you've got a lot of, uh, you know, you can spin a lot of plates. You can juggle a lot of things in your life. You, you are currently in training camp with the Cincinnati Bengals. We are talking about uh, this class that you're going to be teaching at the School of Law at Texas A&M. I know you do great work with your foundation and you're still really committed to Houston. I mean, is there a sports business aspect of this that maybe later on in life or sooner in life that you're you with all of these experiences that you put together you could see yourself starting to pursue that kind of path as well 
Oh, 100 percent. You know, 100 percent. I definitely feel like, you know, that's something that I could be interested in. And um, I definitely feel like, you know, I have my hands, you know, in in, in my um, sports marketing um, team that I have now. Obviously, I'm a, um, I'm a, I'm a client of, of Lionhearted Sports and um, that's a sports marketing team that, that represents me. And obviously, that's something that I definitely feel like um, definitely feel like I can get into at some point, because at the end of the day, you know, especially with, with this new wave and everything that's going and everything that's set up is like it's so much out there to be able to put student athletes, be able to put athletes at the NFL level, collegiate level, you know, NBA, no matter what the athlete are, no matter if they're a, a, a athlete at all, there's so many different avenues to put people in position to be successful. And at the end of the day, it's not about making money. It's not about doing that type of stuff. I just like to put people in position to be successful and just like to, you know, affect people's lives in a certain type of ways. So, but I definitely feel like it's possible that it's something I can be interested in at some point. But um, obviously right now, you know, Football is my number one priority, you know, obviously football and, and then the new professor role and just being a dad and, you know, just focusing on that right now. But it's, it's possible. That's something I could think about down the line. You make any time to think about how many games Texas a and is going to win this year? I hope they win 12. <laughs> I hope they win the SEC. I hope they win a national championship because I got a lot of teammates in the locker room. We talk a lot of mess week in, week out. So hopefully um, those Aggies can do some great stuff because, um, you know, I got a lot of stuff I got to talk in the locker room. You, I mean, you were in an interesting position in your time there. The you're recruited by Kevin Sumlin, and you were there for the transition from Kevin Sumlin to Jimbo Fisher. What were some of your impressions of Coach Fisher, and sort of how how did what you learned then? How does that um, inform you know what you think about the team now? And are you surprised at all with some of the success that they've had? Oh yeah, absolutely not surprised at all. But first off, you know, as always, I want to thank Coach Sumlin for giving me an opportunity to, um, you know, play football at Texas a and Obviously, I was recruited by him um, all throughout high school, and then I made the decision to graduate high school early. The best decision I ever made: graduate high school early and then went to Texas A&M. And obviously, you know, did a lot of amazing things my freshman year. But that allowed me to, you know, get my foot in the door at Texas A&M and establish some great things. But obviously, when Coach Fisher came in. Absolutely, that was um that was one of the highlights of my career. Um, he came in and installed a great system. He's a great individual. Um, he's a great man, and uh, he's a he's a guy. He's a great coach as well. But he's at the end of the day, he's a guy that wants to put you in position to be the best man that you could be. And then at the end of the day, that translates to football. But I'm excited for those guys this year, man. Excited for the new um you know freshman that we have came in. You know, obviously end up having a number one recruiting class. So excited for those guys to get out there on the field. Excited to see what they can do. Um, excited to see this this um, this brewing robbery between Saban and Fisher. So <laughs> excited to see how everything is going to go. But I'm excited for them. I, I definitely feel like they can do great things. And uh, I know Fisher, uh, Coach Fisher, will put everybody in positions to be successful. And, then, you know, all, at the end of the day, all they have to do is go out there and perform. So I'm excited for them. October 8th. I apologize. I don't have the Bengals schedule in front of me right now, but I imagine you will find a way to get your eyes oh. on Texas A&M at Alabama when that <laughs> game is on. They will be glued to the TV somehow, some way. I'm sure all my teammates will be talking mess and whatnot. But um, yeah, I remember last year when uh, when we beat Alabama. The first person I went to was Jonah Williams. Jonah Williams <laughs> had to talk a little mess to him. But uh, but yeah, like I said, I was excited for that and um, excited to see how it's gonna go this year. Obviously, it'll be in. Um, is that Denton Guyer? I don't. I don't know the stadium. It's in Tuscaloosa and uh, stadium. Yeah, but, Brian, uh, yeah, you Bryant Denny Stadium in Tuscaloosa. It's like on a weekend where you're looking at it and you just realize like, this is the game of the year. Oh, Every, the way the game went last year, mm-hmm. everything that happened between Jimbo and Saban back in May with the back and forth, in how good Texas A&M and m and alabama are both expected to be. I mean, that game probably decides the West. Like, yeah, um, without a doubt, game of the year type stuff. Yeah, it'll 100% be college game day. It'll be, it'll be crazy. It'll be a crazy environment, but I'm excited for it, man. I'm excited to see how that goes. Um, well, uh, oh, and also, how, how are you feeling about the uh, the upcoming season? How's training camp going? Oh, training camp is going amazing. Uh, I'm having so much fun right now. Obviously, it's year four for me. It's crazy where the time goes, man. Just obviously getting here in 2019 and, and, and obviously it being year four now, like just to think about how fast time is going. Then obviously coming off the of Super Bowl last year, and we're hyped. We're, we're extremely hyped, and uh, we're excited to see how, how this season is going to go. And we're looking even better than we did last year. So, you know, I'm excited to see how this goes, man. You know, we got some great um, leaders in the locker room. Um, you know, just excited to be a part of the system, excited to be able to contribute. And 
and uh, be able to play this game at a high level. So, you know, we open up with the Steelers week one. So excited to see how this is going to go, man. Uh, yeah, hey, we even got our first preseason game this Friday. So time is ticking, man. Like life is happening fast, but I'm excited for everything and I'm ready to get to it. He is Travion Williams running back for the Cincinnati Bengals. The story that we discussed today, uh, you can actually see it on Beyond Limits. New season debut Saturday, August 13th on CBS and also streaming on Paramount+. Plus. You get to see him uh, spend some time in the classroom, you know, as, as he got in there with AJ and got to have some have some fun around College Station. And so be sure to check that out. Again, Beyond Limits, the new season debuts Saturday, August 13th. Travion, wish you the best of luck this season. Thank you so much, time for spending – thank you for spending time with us here on the Cover 3 Podcast. Thank you so much, man. God bless you guys, and as always, giggle.